So 21 truths and thoughts I want to leave with you in the year 2021. These are basic truths. These are spiritual disciplines. These are secrets, you know. Uh, another word that many of you know is Kung Fu, you know. Give us some Kung Fu of how you uh, uh, get to uh, uh, do things uh, that seem to be abnormal, uh, that seems to be supernatural and even spiritual. Uh, you know, maybe you might even call this the 21 Kung Fus uh, uh, or the 21 arts uh, um, of, uh, of breakthrough. Okay, 21 truths, I should say. Spiritual disciplines. Now, before I move on with um, the next three thoughts, I shared with you the first three last week. I will share with you another three. If I could, I'll share with you six. But uh, there are 13 in the first block, and another eight in the next block. 13 plus eight is 21. I hope my maths is correct. But before I get into that, I want to share with you the scripture, the underlining scripture that's found in 2 Timothy 4 7. And this is what the word of God says in 2 Timothy. Four, seven. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now, I know and I believe that all of us, all of us watching, all of us who are here at DVCC, the home of X Church here in Summit, um, I know for a fact that all of us, we have our own fights to fight every single day. From the, mor from the time we wake up in the morning till the time we close our eyes and go to bed, uh, there is a fight. The Bible calls it a good fight and a fight that we need to fight. But how do we fight in a way that we can win? Uh, there is a race that we are all running and a race that we all should finish. But there is also an enemy called the devil who wants us to lose this fight, who wants us not to finish this race. But we are all finishers in Christ because Christ Himself is a finisher. And He is the author and finisher of our faith, says Hebrews chapter 12. He's the author and finisher. So we are all called and meant to, intended to be finishing the race that we are running. Every day we are running a race. It's not a 100 meter dash, it's more like a marathon of life. And I want all of us to finish and to finish well. How well? This is how well we want to finish. That at the end, when we touch the tape, the end tape, the last uh, finishing line tape of our lives, we can say, like Paul said, I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. Jesus wants us to keep the faith. The devil doesn't want us to keep the faith. He knows how powerful our faith is. The Bible says in John, uh, I believe it's First John, I believe it's First John chapter 5, I'm trying to go by memory now, but it says that it is our faith that has overcome the world. It is our faith. If you really want to overcome the world, friends, it is by faith and not by sight. And that's why the Bible says to live by faith and not by sight. So I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And these are some of the ways to do it. So the first three, I will just repeat to you very quickly as a point of review. One, number one, the highest of all of them is to love God with all your heart. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength. That's what the Bible tells us. This is the first and greatest commandment, number one. Number two is to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3 verse uh, 5 says that. And then number three, the top three, the third one says, serve God with all your heart. Serve God with all your heart. In everything that you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. We read from Colossians. So love the Lord your God with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Serve God with all your heart. If you can do these three things, you will prosper. You will be well. You will grow and you will be satisfied. These are the three most important. Now, the next three are these. Here is point number four. Always put God first in everything. Always put God first in everything. This sounds simple, but not many of us remember to do it. But our God, He loves to be first. Our God wants to be first. Our God knows that we need to put Him first. Because if we don't put Him first, someone else or something else will take that place. And if someone or something else besides God takes that place, we are in trouble. We are in trouble. You know, Revelations 2.4 says this, that God is our first love. Yes, He is our first love. You know, 
my wife and I, we have been married for 25 years. And some of you know that I love my wife very much. And you know that she loves me too. And that's good because God has called us to love uh, each other. In fact, the scripture says to husbands, husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. So it's a very divine love. It's a very powerful love. And I love my wife. But I can tell you this, if you ask me honestly, I will have to tell you that I cannot, I must not love my wife as much as I love God. He is my first love. She cannot take that place. As much as I can love her with my human love, I cannot and I must not and I must never love my wife in the place of God. God must remain as my first love. I know it doesn't sound romantic, people, because most of the songs that you like from uh, you know, Ed Sheeran, I think his name is, or, or, or whoever it is that your favourite songs out there, you know, I will climb the highest mountain, swim the furthest sea, you know, dive the deepest ocean, I will, you know, whatever, I'm nothing without you, I can't breathe without you. All those things sound so romantic, but really they all should be sung unto God. Because there's no one else on the face of the earth that is deserving of you crossing the seas for. I'm telling you right now, there's no one deserving, you know, climbing Mount Everest and down. You know, seriously, friends. I know why you want to sing that way. Because all of you were made in God's image. And actually, God should have that place. And so those songs are coming out. We don't realize it, but it's actually coming out unto God, really. But then we thought that it was coming out for our girlfriend, coming out for our boyfriend. Now, honestly, if you ask my wife, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Sandra, who is your first love? She will also not be daring enough. She will also will tell you that it cannot be my husband even though I love him. It has to be God. And I tell you this, why God has made this so. It's because of this. And listen to me now, this is very important. If my wife can know that her husband, Kenneth Chin, loves God first, then she will also know that I will also always love her. If my wife knows that my first love is God, then she will be guaranteed almost that I will always be faithful to her. And if I know that Pastor Sandra's first love is not me, then I know that she will always love me. You, are, you, are you all still with me? This is the guarantee when you put God first, He will make sure that we live our lives right. And my wife could be so passionate about God, she could go here and there and serve God and go like, oh, I, you know, uh, Pastor Kenneth, you asked me to love God first and so I'm everywhere serving God. But you know, the Lord will speak to her and say, no, uh, Sandra, uh, you know, you're supposed to also love your husband. Please go back and cook for him. He's hungry. And, and Pastor Sandra will do it because she loves God first and she will hear his voice and when he says, go and do this for your husband, she will do it unto him first. Uh, uh, and that is the way to live this life. And the same is with me. You know, when I'm about to be tempted to do other things, you know, to look at another woman or, 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 or enter into pornography, you know, my, my, my God, who I love first, will remind me, hey, hey, uh, you know, uh, don't, don't be unfaithful to your wife. And sometimes guys don't understand this, but even going into pornography can be unfaithful to your wife. We don't understand this, but it's true because you're looking at other women. You're looking at how other people are doing it. You're, you're getting excited about other women, but you should, be getting, you should be getting excited about your wife. So listen to me. You love God first. God loves us so much. You see, He's not one of those selfish dudes up in heaven who just, oh, please love me, please love me. You know, I'm so insecure, God is saying. No, we can't imagine an insecure God. We can only imagine a God that loves us so much that He tells us to love Him and He tells us to put Him first because it's only for our own good. The marriages that put God first will last. And not last, but will be strong. And not just strong, but they will serve from their lives and give God and the world their best. I'm telling you right now. It's the same thing with children. Some, some of you, you know, now that you have children, you go like, wow, this son has changed my life. This daughter has changed my life. I'm no longer the same. I feel like I'm complete now with this son or with this daughter. No, you're supposed to be complete in God, in Jesus. Are you all still with me? That's why Abraham was asked to put God first. And by putting God first, he could even offer back his only son, Isaac. How could he do that? Because he loved God first. And of course, he knew that God had the power to resurrect his son after he had killed him. You are, are you all still with me? How, what, what makes people do the things they do? Well, the answer is God is first. God is first. And it's not just first love. It's also first fruit. Have you heard of first fruit? Give unto God first fruit. 
That's the difference between Cain and Abel, friends. If you look back into Genesis, you will read that Cain brought an offering to the Lord. Abel brought an offering to the Lord. But why was Abel's offering accepted and not Cain? Because Cain brought, the Bible says, the fruit of the ground. Nothing wrong with that, nothing bad with that. He brought the fruit of the ground and gave it to God. Here, God, you know, just I got some, I, I put some things together, went around my field and just plucked, you know, whatever. I just put some things in the basket. Here you go, God. Here you go. I hope you are pleased. And, you know, I think God wasn't really upset. In fact, the Bible didn't even say that God was upset with Cain's offering. The Bible only said that God accepted Abel's offering. And then Cain got jealous. So you see, I don't see the word upset, so don't think that God is just upset with your offering. He accepted Abel's offering because the Bible says very clearly, and you read it in Genesis, that Abel brought from the first fruit, from the firstborn of the animals that he had. Are you all still with me? The, the, the key difference between Cain and Abel is not that one was more special than the other, one had more knowledge than the other, one was you know, uh, Adam's and Eve's favourite son. No, no, no. The key difference was what did it mean to us when we brought that to God? What does it mean to us today when we bring this offering to the Lord? First fruit. God wants not just any fruit, but first fruit because you only give God your best. Firstborn. I can go on to talk about firstborn. Why does God want the firstborn? The firstborn means a lot to parents. Yes, you can have 10 children, but your firstborn will always be special to you. God calls that firstborn, you know what? The one that broke through the womb. The one, the one that broke uh, you know, uh, 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 the womb. The one that came forth. The first one that came forth from the womb is precious. And He says, that child is mine. That child is mine. Now, a lot of parents don't understand this and so they go, no, 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 it's mine. You know, the, the key is not about having children. The key is about having children and still giving it back to God. Can you, can, so, so sometimes the children are so precious, you, you don't want to give it back to God. But God says, if I'm going to give you a child, you better give him back to me. Wow, I give you a child, you give him back to me. That's, that's the equation. And so even before you get a child, please remember that God must be first in everything, in everything. Can you put Him first? Hello everyone. Thank you so much for watching. If you've been blessed by this video, please share this with a friend and bless them too. Do like this video and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Wishing you all good health and God's grace and favour to be upon all of you. God bless you. See you next time.